Hello class, this is going to be the first of several audio lectures that you will get from me for the duration of this break. Today's lecture will be on Japan and Shintoism. Many of you are already familiar with Japan and its location in East Asia, but are not familiar with Shintoism. So today you're going to learn why Japan is important to world history and to the history of East Asia, and you're going to learn why Shintoism is important to Japan's history and what other forces are going to influence the history of Japan. Today's SOL standard is 10C, describing Japan with emphasis on the impact of Shinto and Buddhist traditions and the influence of Chinese culture. So here we are, we're going to go back and look at Buddhism and Buddhism is something that you all are very familiar with. We learned it in first semester. Buddhism is going to have a major role in the history of Japan. The essential question for today is, should you be influenced by someone who lives near you? When thinking about how to answer this question with respect to Japan, if your parents taught you a set of values, but then your next door neighbor who happens to be your best friend has another set of values, will you be influenced by the values of your neighbor because they live near you because they're in close proximity of you this is going to be very important when talking about japan because japan is in a close proximity to another major country that we've talked about many times and we're going to see how being close to someone or being close to another country can influence the lives of the people who live in that country Japan's geography. Japan is a mountainous archipelago. An archipelago is a collection of islands. So Japan is covered in mountains, much like Greece was, but it is also a collection of islands. So Japan is not an island by itself. It is a group of islands, and a group of islands is called an archipelago. This is going to be very important for the SOL test. It has important geographical proximity to China and Korea. Back during this time, Korea was one country. Now you know it as two countries, North Korea and South Korea. You all know about the dictator of North Korea. But China and Korea are going to have major influences on Japan's history. An easy way to point out Japan's geographic identity on a map is it is shaped like a J. Japan's starts with the letter J and it is shaped like a J and this is how you're going to remember it. Here is a map of Japan as you in yellow right here. This is Japan. Here is North and South Korea but back during this time period it was just one Korea and look what major country is next to both of them. China and China is going to have a major influence on both Korea and Japan question that may appear on the SOL and that will definitely appear on your test which map shows the Japanese archipelago if you remember the shape that Japan is is shaped like then this will be an easy answer and it is shaped like a J so I'm going to leave it to you to figure out between the three which one is shaped like a J which culture had the greatest impact on Japanese culture Looking at the map, we know the Chinese culture had the greatest impact on Japanese culture. It was spread to Japan by Korean missionaries. So Chinese culture is going to spread to Korea, and Korea is going to spread Chinese culture to Japan. Here is the writing of Chinese, Japanese, and Korean. If you notice, they actually all look the same with minor differences. Let's look at this first set right here. This is how the Chinese write this expression. The only difference between Chinese and Japanese here is that the line is curved in Chinese, but the line is straight in Japanese. If we look at that same character in Korean, it's curved similar to the Chinese symbol, but the lines going across horizontal are curved whereas they are straight in Chinese and Japanese. Japan's feudal social structure. So as you know 
every civilization we've talked about has a caste system. This is the caste system of Japan, except it's called feudalism. And we're going to get more into feudalism when we talk about Europe at the end of the year. At the bottom of their class are the merchants. They had low social status even though they held wealth. And merchants are those people who sell you merchandise. And the reason they're at the bottom is because people who sell you things can annoy you. So the Japanese placed them at the bottom of the pyramid. Above them are the peasants. They worked the farms and made weapons. In return, the samurai gave them protection. Now, the samurai, which is a term that many of you already have been familiar with, are warriors who swore allegiance to a daimyo, or the shogun, and in return for the loyalty, they were given land grants. So, samurais are the Japanese version of a knight in Europe. Knights were those who were sent to go fight in the Crusades, if you remember. So, a samurai is just the Japanese equivalent of that. Then there is the daimyo. They were great landowners. They would be the nobles in the European system. They swore allegiance to the shogun, yet were also very powerful as they owned land. On top of the daimyo was the shogun. He was the military governor general. He assumed the political power of the emperor and ruled with the support of a noble class of landowners, and the noble class were the daimyos. At the top of the pyramid, was the emperor or the king. He was simply a figurehead, meaning that he didn't have any power. He was just there to be a symbol for the Japanese people. But all of the power belonged with the shogun. The shogun was the head leader and he was the military leader. So he had control over the soldiers and whoever has control over the soldiers during this time period had control over the country. These are pictures of how samurai used to dress. Here's another example of the samurai always fighting with swords. On the left are pictures of the daimyo. They were the landowners. As you see, they're dressed a little more fancy. They have nice clothing. And then on the right is a picture of the shogun. And the shogun was the top dog. He ran the country. What is Shintoism? Shintoism stresses the importance of natural features, forces of nature, and ancestors. This is where the Chinese influence comes into play because if you know Confucianism stresses the importance of ancestor worship. And that is going to spread to Japan, but they're going to add their own spin on it and they're going to focus on nature. Shintoism is unique only to Japan. Japan is the only Asian country that practices Shintoism and actually the only country in the world that practices Shintoism. This is a question that you may see on the SOL or an upcoming test. This artwork is reflective of which religion? The answer of course would be Shintoism because if you look here on the left you see a cherry blossom tree, and on the right you see a bird, and that represents the nature, natural features, forces of nature. So whenever you see any pictures depicting nature, it's going to be Shintoism. What is a Tori? A Tori represents the entrance into a Shinto shrine. So this is an example of a Tori gate. This is entering into a Shinto shrine, and as you notice, it's in the middle of the water. What they believe is, is that you go through the Tori gate here, and you're entering into a sort of magical realm when you go onto the other side, and that's where you practice Shintoism. It's very mystical. As we said earlier, they believe in natural forces. Here's a question that may be on your test. This picture shows a Tori, a gateway that represents the entrance to a Shinto shrine. It is most likely located in which country? If you know, Shintoism is only located in one country, and that country is Japan. What religion coexisted with Shintoism? Buddhism coexisted with Shintoism, which was an influence of Chinese culture. 
and coexisted for those who don't know means exist together so shintoism and buddhism existed side by side they were both practiced by the people of japan if you remember from semester one buddhism originated in india because remember ashoka converted india to buddhist then when ashoka died india is going to revert to hinduism but before he dies he is going to soak china into buddhism so china today is a majority buddhist nation because china is in close proximity to japan that influence is going to spread to japan so japan mirrors china and what they did was they married both shintoism and buddhism together shintoism and buddhism both religions believe that all human life is sacred so here is a venn diagram here and it's this is a question that may pop up on your sol we need to figure out what they have in common so shintoism and buddhism if you were to take your test you would say that both religions believe that all human life is sacred these were the notes for today for Shintoism and Japan. Uh, now, after listening to this uh, presentation, you are now able to go and complete your DBQs on Google Forms underneath the Google Classrooms. Make sure you read your directions carefully, and if you have any questions, please contact me on the Remind Me app.